Hello friends, you should be in Earth Science if you are watching this video. If you scroll down, it is April 22nd, it is Wednesday, and let's check out what we're going to do today. So, we're going to read our I can statement for our opening. We're going to go over some vocabulary words, and I want you to read them out loud. For our work period, you guys should be watching this video named Air Masses and Fronts, and you should be following along as I read. And then at the end of this class period, you should be taking a one question quiz. So let's start with our I can statement. I can construct an explanation of the relationship between air pressure, fronts, and air masses, and how they impact the formation of meteorological events such as thunderstorms and tornadoes. So let's start with our mini lesson. We've got four vocabulary words. So the first word is air mass. Air mass, a large body of air throughout which temperature and moisture content are similar. Anticyclone, the rotation of air around a high pressure center in the direction opposite to Earth's rotation. Cyclone, an area in the atmosphere that has lower pressure than the surrounding areas and has winds that spiral towards the center. And front, the boundary between air masses of different densities and usually different temperatures. For our work period, you should be watching this video and we're gonna start reading. What are air masses? Have you ever been caught outside when suddenly it started to rain? What causes such an abrupt change in the weather? Changes in weather are caused by the movement of bodies of air called air masses. An air mass is a very large volume of air that has a certain temperature and moisture content. There are many types of air masses. Scientists classify air masses by the water content and temperature of the air. These features depend on where the air masses form. The area over which an air mass forms is called a source region. One source region is the Gulf of Mexico. Air masses that form over this source region are wet and warm. Each type of air mass forms over a certain source region. On maps, meteorolo meteorologists use two letter symbols to represent different air masses. The first letter indicates the water content of the air mass. The second letter indicates its temperature. So if you guys, for your quiz today, I'm going to ask you for the definition of air mass. You can find it in this paragraph or it's right here. I want that definition. Next, cold air masses. We're right here, guys. Most of the cold winter weather in the United States comes from three polar air masses. Continental polar air masses form over northern Canada. They bring extremely cold winter weather. In the summer, continental polar air masses can bring cool, dry weather. Maritime polar air masses form over the North Pacific Ocean. They are cool and very wet. They bring rain and snow to the Pacific coast in winter. They bring fog in the summer. Maritime polar air masses also form over the North Atlantic Ocean. They bring cool, cloudy weather and precipitation to New England. Now let's talk about warm air masses. Four warm air masses influence the weather in the United States. Maritime tropical air masses form over warm areas in the Pacific Ocean, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Atlantic Ocean. They move across the East Coast and into the Midwest. In summer, they bring heat, humidity, hurricanes, and thunderstorms to these areas. Continental tropical air masses form over deserts and move northward. They bring clear, dry, hot weather in the summer. What are fronts? The place where two or more air masses meet is called a front. These air masses meet, the less dense air mass rises over the denser air mass. Warm air is less dense than cold air. Therefore, a warm air mass will generally rise above a cold air mass. There are four main kinds of fronts. 
cold fronts, warm fronts, occluded fronts, and stationary fronts. So let's talk about the cold fronts. A cold front forms when cold air mass moves under a warm air mass. The cold air pushes the warm air mass up. The cold air mass replaces the warm air mass. Cold fronts can move quickly and bring heavy precipitation. When a cold front has passed, the weather is usually cooler. This is because a cold, dry air mass moves in behind the cold front. So usually cold fronts make the weather cold, okay? Now we're going to talk about a warm front. A warm front forms when a warm air mass moves over a cold air mass that is leaving an area. The warm air replaces the cold air as the cold air moves away. Warm fronts can bring light rain. They are followed by clear, warm weather. So warm fronts make warm weather. Cold fronts make cold weather. Occluded fronts. Occluded fronts form when warm air mass is caught between two cold air masses. Occluded fronts bring cool temperatures and large amounts of rain and snow. So the warm air is caught in between the two cold airs, okay? Now we've got stationary front. A stationary front forms when a cold air mass and warm air mass move toward each other. Neither air mass has enough energy to push the other out of the way. Therefore, the two air masses remain in the same place. Stationary fronts cause many days of cloudy, wet weather. Now, how does air pressure affect the weather? Remember that air produces pressure. However, air pressure is not always the same everywhere. Areas with different pressures can cause changes in the weather. These areas may have lower or higher air pressure than their surroundings. A cyclone is an area of the atmosphere that has lower pressure than the surrounding air. The air in the cyclone rises. As the air rises, it cools. Clouds can form and may cause rainy or stormy weather. An anticyclone is an area of the atmosphere that has higher pressure than the surrounding air. Air in the anticyclone sinks and gets warmer. Its relative humidity decreases. This warm, sinking air can bring dry, clear weather. Cyclones and anticyclones can affect each other. Air moving out from the center of an anticyclone moves towards area of low pressure. This movement can form a cyclone. The figure below shows how cyclones and anticyclones can affect each other. Okay? Now for your closing, you will click activities, click quiz, and you're going to answer April 22nd, air masses and fronts. Okay, guys? So I want you guys to get on there and answer that question. If you guys have not finished your summative on the quizzes page, please do it today. It's very important that you guys get it done.